Hi, everyone, and welcome to Weekly Homilies with Father Mark Sislenko, pastor of Saints Isidore and Maria Parish in Glastonbury, Connecticut. We are part of the Catholic Archdiocese of Hartford. I'm Carol Vassar, Parish Director of Communications, and you're listening to Season 4, Episode 7, for the third Sunday in Ordinary Time, January 24th, 2021. Our Gospel reading is from Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called to them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. What kinds of thoughts and images and feelings come to mind when you hear the word repentance, repentance. For some of us, we may associate it immediately with fear, thinking that God has some specific things that he needs us to do. And if we don't do them, we can face some very dire eternal consequences. And so therefore, our understanding of repentance is trying to rid ourselves of that which is wrong so that we can avoid the punishment that may come if we do not. Others may understand repentance with indifference. What is it that I really need to repent of? I have no desire or need for repentance. Others may see it as taking stock in one's weakness and one's sinfulness and conforming themselves more fully to Christ. It's important to understand how we process that word repentance in order for it to then have meaning for us. Many of us have been taught that the best way to conform behavior is through fear, that if someone is afraid, then they will do what is right. The fact of the matter is, is that someone who is gripped by fear will most certainly avoid doing that which is wrong. But that same fear may also prevent that person from doing something that is incredibly good. What we need to understand about the motivation of fear is that it is crippling. So is it that which God intends us to comprehend and see in that word repentance? Someone by the name of St. John Climacus, he was a Syrian monk in the 6th and 7th century, has something very profound to say about repentance. And I think it's very useful for us who are trying to understand how our lives unfold and what God is looking for from us. St. John tells us this. To repent is not to look downward at my shortcomings, but upward at God's love. It is not to look backwards with self-reproach, but forward with trustfulness. It is not to see what I failed to be, but what by God's grace, I might yet become. 
And so there is a much different understanding of repentance that involves three very critical elements, God's love, trust, and new birth. And so we hear the words, repent and believe in the gospel. And those powerful words can now have meaning for us. We sometimes come to life with an expectation on our shoulders. And it's an expectation that God somehow is supposed to put us into this almost perfect world so that we can achieve our happiness. That somehow this world is supposed to just unfold and be a place of harmony and peace. We quickly find out that it is not. And it is our task, especially as disciples of Jesus Christ, to bring the values of the gospel into this world so that what we have around us reflects not ourselves, but our creator. That we do all in our power to bring that good news to all corners. God has entrusted this world to our care not just for our own use and satisfaction, but for the satisfaction and use of all in God's glory. What happens as we live life sometimes is we bump up against some negative things like disillusionment, despair, hopelessness, and helplessness. And so human beings naturally find themselves backing into apathy, where it becomes more and more of a chore to take stock in oneself and do that which we can do better, that reflects our better self, our more fine-tuned self. We tend to simply remain tethered to our past, unable to turn the page and allow God to do something better. I'm sure there isn't a person here today who hasn't beaten themselves up over something they did, didn't do, or should have done. We all have trouble leaving our brokenness and forgiving ourselves for those past transgressions. Repentance is all about doing so. It's realizing our sinfulness, but also our weakness and our ability to leave that stuff behind so that we can embark upon something new and better. This is what God wants. And so when we hear those words, repent and believe in the gospel, we're actually recognizing our need for a creator to show us how to negotiate life, to put the puzzle pieces together, and to make what we have around us the best that it can be. It's always a journey that involves deep faith, abundant love, and great measures of hope that when we realize the need to move on and beyond, we experience great joy and gladness in our hearts. We realize that we have a purpose and a direction. We have a mission to accomplish and a task to do. If we embrace that mission and that task, with fear, we will never have the courage to risk as the gospel asks us to risk, to live lives that are different and radical and focused on justice and peace and the well-being of all of God's children. 
It is only then when we leave our comfort zones and venture out into the unknown that we find the joy and peace that living with Christ can truly offer. Father Mark Sislenko is the pastor of Saints Isidore and Maria Parish in Glastonbury, Connecticut. Learn more about our parish community at isidoreandmaria.org and follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Our music comes free of charge from Blue Dot Sessions in Fall River, Massachusetts. I'm Carol Vassar. Thanks for listening. <laughs>